Welcome back to Breath of the Wild. We are climbing up to Shatterback Point to take on the, in this run, first Lionel. Overall, I'm not, well, I'm experienced in that I had played through the game before. But, uh, I recorded everything, like almost literally everything in the main run before I did the alternate stuff. So, we are sort of seeing me taking on the first Lionel. So, inexperience is to be expected. How long was the gap between your first run and this recording? A couple weeks. So, at best, a little rusty. At best. I don't think I ever got really good at the Lionels until recently. But of course, on the way, we got plenty of guys in the way. So, fun, somewhat related fact. I don't know if anyone didn't watch the Bidging with Babbage video about uh, Breath of the Wild. Instead of Monster Extract, he uses Ube, which is a purple yam. Um, I have his book on my Amazon wishlist, and it is recommending Ube Extract for me. Oh, nice. All right. I'm like, why is this in my recommend? Oh... You're good, Amazon. You're good. Too good. I'm sure that one video, like, greatly boosted the sales of Ube, because I'd never even heard of it until that video. Me neither. So, the Lionel hasn't actually spawned yet. I need this cutscene to happen first. Yeah. That's a good hustle there, Link. <laughs> right? This is, uh, technically a stealth mission. Yeah, you don't actually have to fight the Lionel. You might have noticed there are shock arrows just buried everywhere. And you can run around and pick them up. That's the main reason to be here. But I like fighting the Lionel. And also, even when you're sneaking, he can hear you. Oh, yeah. That giant mane is actually a sound conductor. Yeah, man. I mean, like, there's no reason not to fight him. Unless you're severely under-equipped or just not very good at the game. Yeah, but you're gonna have to fight... Well, I guess you technically don't have to fight Lionels ever, but... Look at that! Look at that! Yeah, doggy! I pretty much Metal gear in that one. He does go straight to where he heard your footsteps, like in Metal Gear, so you can't sneak up around him. But as you notice by the coloration, brown fur and red mane, this is the basic Lionel. Basic Lionel can still <laughs> fuck you right up. Wow. Yeah. How did that shit taste? Because he just made you eat it. Like whatever was in that shock potion. Now, the reason I drank that is because he does fire shock arrows. But you have to be at a distance for him to bring out his bow. I'm just being careful. He, he mostly prefers to engage, charge in. I like it too. I find the timing on this really easy. If you miss that, if you miss that first swing, you can usually get it on the second. Unless you eat the second swing. Look how hard you've been wailing on it. I don't know, it looks like I got hit, but I still managed to dodge. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta take advantage of those iframes. So if you're doing this at home, my advice to you is bring a lot of melee weapons, because they have a ton of health. And you'll just, you'll break everything. Doesn't know how much damage the weapon does, it will run out the durability. Yeah. Like, flurry rushes are really bad for that sort of thing, especially with lower level weapons. But it's legit, like, the only way to get any good damage on him. 
Now, I don't think I've ever managed it. I don't know if you can parry the fireballs. If you can, it doesn't send it back to the Lionel, it just dissipates it. Well, <laughs> however you slice it, I sure don't have the stones to do that. So if you run out of melee weapons, are there any, like, scattered about, or are you just kind of shit out of luck? You're kind of shit out of luck. Use some of your shock arrows on. Now, I don't know if... Oh, look, we're about to find out. Okay, so it turns out they are not susceptible. No. No arrow is going to, like, be super effective against it. However, any arrow that shoots him in the face will stun him. Yeah. Which is what I'm trying to do. Shock arrows often will make enemies drop whenever they're carrying. Yeah. Also you. Reminder, this is early in the recording session, but I managed it there. Yep. That stuns him and then he can run up, jump on him, and smack him in the back some more. No, I'm too far away. The one thing you probably noticed, when I fired the shock arrows, there was this big radius around him. That's a result of the rain. That could happen if you fire into a body of water, or you fire when it's raining. I don't know if it increases the damage, but it does increase the area of effect. The one thing I like to do... Okay, you can parry, but it doesn't fire back. Uh, when he shoots those fireballs, it does set the grass on fire which will create an updraft you can fly up and then take advantage of the slow-mo and fire some arrows in his face. Yeah, I gotta say, just from watching this, I bet this feels awesome to play. Yeah, it's really fun. Pretty frustrating if you're inexperienced, and even if you are experienced and just get a bad dodge, but they're a lot of fun to fight. Yeah, it's one of those things I can tell, like, once you get good at it, it just feels so good to be good at it. You just absolutely dunk on him, it's so good. Silver Lionel's will still mess you up, though. Suddenly Piggy? Yeah, you know. He lives here, too. Oh, ran in a tree. <laughs> nope. Oh, I got it. Yes, bank him to death. You did it! Cool guys don't look at death. No, no, like, you put your sword away right as they explode. <laughs> I don't think he's missing much of anything there, Tooltip. <laughs> Yeah, the line of weapons are pretty great. The description says that the shields can be used offensively, but I've never managed that. I don't think it's actually true. No. I mean, maybe for a Lionel. Can deal slashing attacks when deflecting. Yeah, I have no idea. Not really something you'd want to use a shield for. Right? Like, I don't know, maybe it does some extra damage when you parry. I guess. Maybe. And very awesomely, all of the Lionel bows have multipliers. So, for the cost of one arrow, it fires out three. Nifty. So good for bomb arrows. Not so good for anything else. The base damage is usually relatively low, like... The one I got there is has a base damage of 10, but it, at the cost of three arrows, yeah, three bomb arrows, it doesn't matter what the base damage is, you're gonna wreck shit. More like carpet bomb arrows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And somewhere, I think it's also a Lionel bow, there's a bow out there that can fire five arrows. Yeah. Which is just insane. I think that's the Savage? I think it's like the very top... Lionel. Yeah. From the from the silver Lionel. I see a island out there. Hmm. 
Can't tell if that's an actual island or part of the skybox. What was the Lionel firing at? <laughs> what was that sign? Jump. Okay. Ha! Ah, I can fly, sort of. Look at that, that's a good view of Aruda. Shatterback Point is right above the dam. So, I just need to find wherever Sidon's hanging out. It's so dumb that you can just fly in there, though. Gotta let Sidon be a cool guy. This is kind of cool. You can see right there, there are stairs that lead up to here. If you want to take the long way. Look, man, we gotta make Sidon feel useful every once in a while or else he mopes. Kind of funny, I dropped a knight shield to pick up the Lionel shield, and then there's another one right there. And there's also a bed here if you need a recharge. But I'm feeling pretty good. No chests. No, I'm speaking of moping. What do you think that ding signifies? Like, is that a gleam, or is there, like, something in his teeth? He uses crest white strips. <laughs> okay. So, Sidon didn't make a great first impression. He seemed like kind of a cool, fun character that he kept showing up. So, if, if you didn't like him coming up through here, this one sequence should hopefully completely redeem him. This is up there as one of the coolest things you do in the game. I shall pay rapt attention. What's new on Twitter? <laughs> Oh, don't you, don't you swim around me, little, little fish man, don't you do it. I like it with my movement, it looks like I'm riding him like he's a horse. His head tail is bapping you right in the balls, man. Hurtling giant ice blocks. Okay. Alright. Can we get rid of that ice? <laughs> I like that they have, <laughs> they have voice acting. And he just, he doesn't sound very excited. Yeah, he's very blasé about the ancient mystical ice that is attacking you. So I'm gonna say it right now. There's something almost completely obvious now that I see it that you can do here. If you look at those ice blocks, they have the exact same image as the Cryonis. Nobody remembers Cryonis. <laughs> yeah, so you can literally just pull up Cryonis and break all the blocks. But once you've deflected all the blocks, Sidon takes you over to the waterfalls, you jump right up, and then you can fire lightning arrows into those glowing points. For some annoying reason, the slow-mo immediately cuts out once you've destroyed one of them, but if your aim is good, you can get a second one. Your aim? Not good. My aim? Not so good. So I have to do this the hard way. I have to actually deflect the blocks with my weapons. When I did this, I shot him with arrows like a dummy. I did that too. I didn't even think of just playing baseball. I mean, come on, fill the game. If you don't play sword tennis, what are you even doing? Obviously wasting my time. <laughs> and arrows. Yeah. And like that, if you do get hit by the block, it respawns. I think you have to lead the arrow a little bit, because it does follow the trajectory. You are moving. Yeah. But this is a really cool sequence. This is a lot of fun. The music is awesome. And we're not even in the dungeon itself yet. I don't know. I think this works better with, like, a... Uh, what should we call it? Got it. Nice! Metal Gear Rising style butt rock. <laughs> yeah. Rules of water! Oh, hello. Jump straight to the final round. Kind of awesome. 
Those ones, you need to wait until both of you have sort of hit a straightaway so the arrow can hit. At least that's how I did it. Reminder, I'm clearly doing it wrong. Damn it. Oh, nice. Face first, at least. I lo that looks so wimpy, swinging around the claymore. I was about to say, you're like, eh, stop it, giant ice blocks. <laughs> eh, yeah, stop being such a meanie, Viruta. I'm a T-ball champion. I'm gonna tell your Dark Lord. Oof. This needs sassy, like, GTA-style responses when you get hit. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. I like his little pump handle tail. That's that's pretty cute. Oh my God. For some reason, he does follow in sequence the waterfalls. He doesn't go straight to the waterfall you're missing. So just wait on his back until he goes up to the right one. That's kind of cool. One thing I didn't like so much about Skyward Sword was how much shit you had to do before you actually got to the dungeon. You just got so drained and then finally you got there. Here is a relatively quick sequence of deactivating the Divine Beast and then the dungeon itself. I like, I think, pretty much all of them. Yeah, Skyward Sword's like you drop down from the sky and then you effectively do a dungeon and then do another dungeon. Yeah. Well, Link, here we are. Looks like this is where the real work starts. Best of luck. Nice job cutting off the water flow from this divine beast. Show the enemy no fear. I'll see you back at Zor's domain. Farewell. Time to finish the fight. One of them. And now we can teleport here if we need to leave. You're here. I must say that I am so happy to see that this day has finally arrived. I'm so happy. Wow, no trust in me, huh? You can buy one for nineteen ninety-five. Available wherever books are sold. The guidance stone there contains the information that you will need. So the divine beasts are pretty cool locations. Even though it looks like the world is loaded in, you're actually in a completely different map. If I pulled up the map, I would actually I would be able to teleport out, but then I would have to teleport in if I wanted to get to the dungeon. One thing we're going to see a lot of is eyeballs and malice. All those peepers! Little robo peepers. Basically, Ganon wrecked these, he wrecked guardians, and he just left a mess behind. Oh, you're gonna subaquatically peep me. Now, I'm kind of surprised to hear that people think the Divine Beasts aren't that great, because... I mean, it's... I guess it's nothing you don't already see in all the shrines, but... 
I like the shrines generally, and I like the puzzles that you do. And I like these, and I like the puzzles you do in these. Remember that? Nope. Took me a long time to remember that first time. Fucking cryonics, man. If only it was more useful. Okay. Think of a different sound effect this time, and I'll keep it in. Censored. Hello. <laughs> I was gonna say splash, but okay. Well, it, I guess it already does that, so. Yeah. Wow. Look at it. look at this amazingly granular control we have of this ancient <laughs> war machine. Ninety degrees of trunk movement. <laughs> Good. You've obtained the map of the divine beast. You will see several glowing points on your map, which represent the terminals that control Ruta. Take Ruta back by activating all of the terminals. Be careful. Every Divine Beast has five terminals we need to activate before we can fight the boss. And the map actually lets us activate a certain part of it. In this case, Varuda's Trunk, which is spitting out water. I feel like these are interesting ideas. Like, Varuda is pretty minimal in what you use the Trunk for. So what does the Trunk actually do as you shift it around? Um... There's a couple of places where the water will spill into Varuda itself. Like, in one case, there are wheels, and that will activate the wheel. And we need to activate the terminals before we can open that. Luckily, first terminal is right here. Uh, I'm in uh, trouble. Uh, mm, come on. Hold on. Show us your knowledge of basic machinery. And yes, the Guardians will talk to you constantly. They say essentially the same thing in every Divine Beast. There are four terminals remaining. Don't give up. That just makes me want to give up more, Mifa. Yeah, I'm gonna... Like, what, are you, what are you implying? It's like, they show you where the map is. But after that point, they don't really hold your hand, but they still talk to you. And also, every time you activate a terminal, the music changes a little bit. Oh, that's always nice. I like when games have dynamic music. Oh, that was the music. For a second there, it sounded like something was laughing at me. And that's the perfect time to say nobody's laughing at this LP, Thorn. Yeah, no, you're great, buddy. What are you talking about? We're hilarious. You're the people's champion. I mean, Skippy's so funny he made that kid crap. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look, not gonna lie. That's the finest compliment I've ever had. <laughs> Five-year-old child, if you're watching this, how's it going, buddy? Although I will say, screw tape. Our channel is not one that five-year-olds should be watching, but thank you. No, we have salty mouths. There are three terminals remaining. You can do it. We are big old potty mouth. Nobody likes a potty mouth, five-year-old child. If you can be funny and clean, then the world is yours. You have a greater demographic. And money's the important part. That's right. That's how success is measured. Numerically. Every Divine Beast does have chests in it. However, once you've completed the beast, you're not able to come back here. Luckily, none of the chests have anything permanently missable. Like, it's mostly just rupees and treasures that you would find elsewhere. But I do try to get all of them anyway. There's practically nothing permanently missable in this game. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, you better not peep me. Oh, Linky, peep me. Better not gargle me, Dad. <laughs> Ooh. You said it, Malice Mouth. <laughs> oh. Oh, he's very well hidden. I think we saw it in the alternate route, but if you didn't watch that, those mouths will spew out skeleton ghost heads that will fly after you. 
but if you don't get seen by the eyeball, they don't. Now, here's the room I was talking about. I need Varuda to move his nose forward a little bit. Oh god. Such control. Such power. Enjoy my booger water! And we got a couple of interesting puzzles here. I like that the beasts take advantage of multiple runes. So, in this case, I need to use stasis for a couple of things. One, to keep it in place, because that's where the switch is, but it's on a different side of the wheel. You also need to use stasis in order to get that chest. This is what we want to do it. As it moves over, stasis the top block. Because the bottom one is the one that the chest is connected to. Get crushed, get crushed, get crushed. Dang it. That is a worthwhile reward, too. Now I've got the big wheel moving. We can break that block. And now use the small wheel to get up onto the big wheel. Oh, nicely done. But I see some more malice. They'll never peep me down here. Oh, don't you peep me, Link. Link, don't do it. Oh, Link. Oh, dang it. And I did that because there was a chest hidden there. But I didn't see it until now, so I need to wait for it to come back around. Thanks. Fine. I'll use that against machinery. Oh, brutal. Yeah, you ruined his day. Shortcut. Pretty awesome shortcut. Yeah, I need to get back up there. I'll just swim upwards. Well, you learned the HM waterfall. Aww. Oh. Oh, it looks like there's a little dot on the end of the hose nose there. Ah, oh, sneaky. How far can I fly? Oops. I guess nowhere. What will we do? Oh. Wait, I can't see it. Ah! Oh. Midair peepsmanship! Better not peep me. You better not peep. You better not sleep. Better not creep. Yeah. Cause that's not too deep. Link has come to shoot my eye. I don't know. Oh no. All this peeper centric humor, it's crazy. So the physics engine in this game is pretty good, but you can walk it out a little bit. The Divine Beasts are Sheikah technology, so they're super slippery. However, depending on where ledges are placed, you can sort of climb around them. Or you can do this. <laughs> right on. So for those of you playing along at home, what you're meant to do is glide. You're supposed to glide from the door. Well, this is Breath of the Wild. It doesn't matter what you're meant to do. You can do something else. Oh, yeah. You can just basically bumble biscuit around until you, you know, face rub your way up. Some good old-fashioned Skyrim climbing. Right? Oh. 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 Hello. Haha. -ha. You've done it! They call me Spider Brain. No one calls you that. Pretty sure if you fall off of Varuda, it's just a bottomless pit. Yeah. It's its own independent map. You don't land in the lake. <sighs> That's a problem. Don't peep me at range! Aw, oh, you peeped me at range. Speed of range. That was a quite a far away malice. It was a particularly malicious peeper. It was my estranged goo. 
only see it every other weekend and some holidays. Court ordered. I have to pay goo support. It's like a third of my income. It's crazy. I can't believe that my malice took me for all I was worth. That sounds almost deep. Right? So remember kids, don't let your malice take you for all you're worth. Just, you know, if you're gonna generate a puddle of malice, make sure it's for real, you know? There's there's no reason to rush into these things. Or a pre goopual agreement. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, sir. Oh no, I missed it. Ah. Oh. No, whatever. There's a chest down here. Now, I had the right idea there. I do need the water to pass over that little hole. Problem is I was getting ahead of myself. I hadn't actually opened up the hole yet. Uh, typical man. <laughs> so I'm trying to get down there. Oh no! Fall into Varuda's fontanelle. And now same mechanic, same awkward spinning control. Uh, wrong way. Oh god! Sorry, Baruda. There we go. So a couple of clever uses of the nose. And once you've doused the water, those spouts don't produce any more fire. You activated all the terminals. Now you can start the main control unit. There should be a new glowing mark on your map. Head there. Be careful not to let your guard down. Blah, blah, blah. Thanks, Princess Google Maps. <laughs> so I'm guessing the Sheikah Slate is waterproof. Thank goodness. It's a number of things proof. And surprisingly, my swimsuit is my most effective armor. And if you drop the Sheikah slate on a corner, it just the screen just shatters. It's the worst. It just explodes outwards. Also, every so often, Sheikah battery explodes. So, like the Guardians... I'm sorry, what'd you say? Their eyes are the weak spot, yeah. <laughs> so shoot them enough in the eye, they fall over. There's a number of ways you can fight these guys. Uh, like with all the other enemies, you are able to dodge their attacks and get a perfect dodge. I jumped a little late there, but that is one of those cases. Let's see if I can get it this time. Nope, too early. There, I got it. And of course, breaking a weapon against them does stun them as well. That's not super effective. No. Not at all. You should use the Guardian weapons. They're weak against the same stuff. I feel like I'm hanging onto those for something more pressing. Like a Guardian? Yeah, not these guys. But the second mode of the boss. 
He floods the room, except for these four pillars. Not much room to so basically, I have a way to fight him. This is when they start to act like a Zelda boss. Yeah. Same situation. I didn't know about Crayonis. Yeah, normally you just use an app to deal with their attacks. It's like, oh, what do you do then? Uh, hey, that was mine. Uh, get up there. Come on. Luckily, they stay stunned for quite a while. Yeah. They've got a long timer or a damage counter. Uh, I guess because of the open nature of the game, they just take way too much damage. The fight's over too fast for them to have personality. Yeah, I just, you know, in terms of their design, this is just, you know, a weird love child between a, a Ganon and a Guardian. There's no mythology to them, you know? Nice. Friggin' good, man! I'm not going over there. Nah. That's too far. They're pretty easy to fight. I do think they're fun to fight, though, at least. Yeah. yeah it doesn't look bad, just doesn't look great. Like, they're, they're fun fights, but again, they just, you know... What, what is this? They die pretty spectacularly. Yeah, I'm thinking back to Ocarina of Time, and every boss is, like, part of the story, effectively, in its own, like, in a different way. Yeah, they have a, a habitat. They fit, it's not just Ganon made a thing. Right. Oh, this is the evil spider that's destroying the Deku tree, or, you know, this is the fire dragon that's been causing the volcano to erupt. Here's some hippie drumming in a graveyard like an a-hole. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe they're not all the best. Whatever, Bongo Bongo's great. Bongo Bongo's a pretty good boss. He just, he, he's a ghost that loves drumming, man. Well, it came from the age of Nintendo bosses with giant hands. Of course. There was one in Mario 64, there was one in Star Fox. And now we can never come back to Varuda. Hello, Link. Because of your courage, my spirit is now free. And Ruta as well. Thank you. For I am now allowed by this freedom to be with you once again. Since I am now a spirit, my healing power would be wasted on me. I have no need of it. So therefore, I would like you to have it. Please accept. Mifa's grace. <laughs> Yesterday, I was awash in a pool of tears. I had nearly given up hope and resigned myself to being trapped here as a spirit for the rest of eternity. But now you're here. All this time, my hope was to see you once more. Promise me that you will not hesitate to call upon my power if you ever find yourself in need. Knowing that will let my spirit rest in peace. I must go. Ruta and I have our roles to fulfill. We are both honored to be able to play the role of support. We'll annihilate Ganon together. Farewell. Save her, Link. Save the princess. Save Princess Zelda.
found a way to be useful to Link, and the other champions, of course. Our job will be to help Link as he fights Ganon inside the castle, however we can. Using your ability to drain Ganon of his power is key to our success. This is it. This will be our last chance, and everyone's last hope. If we seal him away, then we can restore peace to Hyrule. And both your duty and mine will be fulfilled. Father, are you well, I wonder? I want you to know I have always followed my heart. I'm sorry I made you worry. I wish I could see you again. Even just once more. See, this is why I think Zor's Domain is the best story-wise, because you and Mipha, like, actually connect to the places. All the other places, everyone that the Guardians would have known is long dead, so, like, you're not really connected to anything. Hey, there you go, you got a one-up. Yep. And every time I run out of health, right. Mipha will completely heal me and give me an extra three hearts. That's generally why you want to do Zora's Domain first, because it's... it's leeway. Is that every time, or you do have to, like, recharge that somehow? It has to recharge. Just a time thing? Just time. Yep. Doesn't take too long, like, maybe 15 minutes. Well, that's... That's pretty good balance, actually. Yeah. And you can also carry around fairies. They do the same thing. Give you CPR. If you get in your world rock that often, then an extra life isn't gonna help you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh straight up adorable. Don't hope you remember my fucking name. <laughs> Do you know who I am? Because I don't. I have deep mental problems. Ah. <laughs> who? <laughs> Oh, apparently a lot of Zoras are enemy. <laughs> it turns out that non-web toes are kind of the kink around here. <laughs> a lot of Zoras get surgery to separate them. The older Zoras are upset about the loss of cultural identity. <laughs> <laughs> Just chewing on my tongue. Ow. The fuck I am. Hi. Well, now you're just doing it on purpose. <laughs> now I am in your way. And he was right. So what happens if you run out of shock arrows during the that sequence? You're kinda of boned. Does the game, like, fail it for you, or is there a way to get out? Yeah, I'm pretty sure what happens is Sidon says, Uh, you hecked up. <laughs> Let's try this again. You unscrewed the pooch. I mean, he says, at minimum, you need, like, 20. Clearly, you only need four. He has very little faith in you. Look at all those recolors. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you had a character arc ending change of heart. Hooray! If I forgive you now, do we never have to talk again? Yes.
It's actually trapped. There's some patches bullshit going on here. <laughs> they said it was the Dark Souls of Zelda games. They call it the Mr. Sward. <laughs> oh, what if the game had them screw up the name of the Master Sword? Uh, I don't know. I may not be thinking of a Zelda game at all. Thankfully, this is the internet, and someone will figure out exactly what I'm thinking of ten minutes after this video goes up. <laughs> Which is impressive, because we're 47 minutes in. That uh, broke my arm. Oh, you dislocated my shoulder, Sidon. I like you, Sidon. You are so faithful and upbeat. <laughs> But never make that chant ever again. Yo, oh, Zo, ra, ra, ra! That'd be so weird. Like, if we did that. You, you, man, man, man. <laughs> go, go, run, run, run. Run that race. Run away from the giant rock people who are trying to crush you. Run away, run. Go, go, rock, rock, rock. <laughs> oh. Yeah, 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 ha, ha. <laughs> Thump. Ow, 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 ow. Mm -hmm. Oh, my tiny cabeza. Yeah. She dead, mm. fam. She has been dead the whole time. You dumb motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she said lose some weight. Oh my god, Nintendo, just say dead. She's dead. You can say dead. Disney's saying dead now. You can say it too. Look, man, Disney put out the Hunchback of Notre Dame. You can say dead. <laughs> <laughs> Pour the wine and cut the cheese! I'm sorry I reminded you of the bad part of Hunchback of Notre Dame. No. And he won't let us do fart noises. <laughs> <laughs> That's right below the limit. No! <laughs> well, now we know where the line is. <laughs> fart jokes? Yes. Fart noises? No. That's the red line. It's the glass floor. <laughs> That's the thin red line of LP jokes. So there are not necessarily permanent weapons. However, the weapons that you get for beating the Divine Beasts, which are all weapons that the champions used to use, if you break those, you can go back to those locations and get them replaced. So that's the closest the game gives you. So, wait. The King of the Zoros just has an infinite supply of those spears? Apparently you can just make legendary weapons. Yeah, you just need to go to the smith. Yeah. Cost you like a few sapphires or something? Oh, I, I like the idea of he just, as soon as you leave, he puts another one in the treasure chest. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. There's just a stack of 200 right behind the throne. <laughs> no, Link, you can only have one. I am incredibly overstocked on these. I'm just giving them away. Thanks for coming by. Don't forget to take your legendary light scale trident. Once you beat Varuda, there's actually a lot of side quests that open up in Zora's Domain, so next time we're going to be taking care of all those, and that's pretty much going to be the last that we'll see of the Zoras. Yeah. That's fine. I didn't like most of them anyway. <laughs> I mean, there's not much difference between them and anyone else. They're people. That's okay. I don't like anyone much. <laughs> and therefore, we trust your judgment. You guys are just above the thin red line. Oh, cool. I'm glad to know that we're the fart jokes of your friends. Yep. <laughs> the straw hat, no fart jokes, please. No, no thank you. I'm trying to keep it classy. For the five-year-old children! <laughs> Thanks, dads. <laughs> You're the worst parents. Or mom, I don't actually know. Could be either or.
let's go with cliches and say no mother would ever let their kid watch this nonsense. <laughs>